Hello everybody, I'm Victor. Thank you for watching this video. This video is an extension of the other video that I made regarding the unglaciated area of Wisconsin, which is a very rare occurrence because, as you know, most of the northern states are covered with foreign material carried in by the glacier from Canada many thousands of years ago, that which has covered up much of the northern states. Unlike the southern states, this one part right here that is in central Wisconsin, and if you're familiar with uh, geological maps, you would know that there is a small section in the state of Wisconsin that has not been covered by glaciation. And the glaciation that uh, has came here, came here only a little by a little bit. So we can find most of the uh, actual native material that was always here, that was always formed here. And I gotta tell you, uh, this is like uh, the best place to do, uh, the best place to discover native material, but it's actually the worst place because you know, there's so much uh, other stuff going on, like, uh, you know, the attractions of Wisconsin Dells, you know, I'm here, with, and it's not easy doing these videos when you're on vacation with your family, you know. Wife and kids like to do everything else, like go on the water slides and do all the unnecessary shopping for jewelry and clothes and things and all the luxury items of our present day complex world but me I'm a little different I like the simple things I'm, I'm, I'm kinda weird like that so without further ado I like to show you or re-show you the types of rocks that I discovered here and uh, these were from the, that location that I was at and, and you know something folks I think I'm gonna do another video that because I didn't really show you all the, you know, I really give you a bird's eye, a good bird's eye view of that landscape. For those of you who are not familiar with Devil's Lake, but these are the rocks I discovered. This is a, let's see, uh, I would say it's a conglomerate, an assortment of quartz pebbles compacted together. And this one was really cool. This is, these are the ones that I really like to keep here. This is a metamorphic sandstone, almost basaltic. And this is without being polished, without being wetted. This is the actual, real deal, what they would look like if you discovered them. Because that's the way I like it. This one right here would be pretty good for railroad ballast. Railroad, much railroad ballast is what you have in this form, which is the uh, purplish quartzite around many of the railroad tracks here in, in the state of Wisconsin. This rock right here is a metamorphic quartzite. And this rock is a white quartzite. This, this is baraboo quartzite, as they call it, which was uh, formed, it's, it began to form one billion years ago, but it didn't actually take form, I don't believe, until by 100 million years ago it finally became quartzite. It was sand and sediment that was deposited into the shallow sea, and under heavy pressure from heat and uh, other sediment topped over it, it finally turned into quartzite, which probably occurred, say, a hundred million years ago. But it, and it only began to form one billion years ago. So that's this is Baraboo quartzite. And I think the white quartzite here is even younger than that because quartz fills in cavities of the outcrop. Or this could be, or calcite, if you will. And to prove that this was, that, that that event did occur, you have a conglomerate here of limestone with these purplish quartzite pebbles compacted into it. And then there were other rocks that I discovered around here. This is a vesicular sandstone, a sandstone with many holes and pour, with holes and pores in it. And it's very rough grained. It's pretty cool. And this... Rhyolite, the volcanic equivalent of granite, had it cooled slower. And these two right here are granite. Most likely they were also native to the area, or they could have been the, could have been brought in by the glacier if there was any little bit of glacial activity. In some cases, uh, there is granite in Wisconsin that was formed in Wisconsin and not Canada. Here is basalt. And basalt, my friends, is 
usually black. It has no character, and it's almost always overlooked. And <laughs> to tell you the truth, nowadays, with all the you know luxuries that we have, every one of these rocks are pretty much overlooked, unless they're for the purpose of construction. But not by me. And I want us to get back to that. This one, vesicular basalt, still has its holes in it. This is the exact opposite, a basalt amygdaloidal. It has its holes filled in with calcite, or in this case, and you really can't see it in this video, but it has, oh, you know, these, these holes, these, these little calcite pieces right here, these cavities are actually mini geodes. They, they look like little ge they're little geodes. And they're pretty cool. It looks like it has little eyes. And as I showed you in the last video, so here you have it, folks. And uh, by the way, there was another uh, video where I kind of misspoke, or where I said that if I die one day, whenever I die, I would like my kids to just let the rocks go back to nature. Well, not true. I mean, just don't cut them and polish them. They, I mean, I love for my children and grandchildren and grandchildren's children to keep them, but keep them as they are. Okay? And I just want to throw that out there to them. And it's something for all of us to think about, you know, because rocks are, so much other stuff has been turned into cars or houses, just as I said in other videos. It's good that we keep rocks just as they are, as nature made them, for us to have and enjoy. So that's why I keep, that's why I never believe in cutting or polishing these rocks. And I don't believe in buying them from gem stores. And this is probably bad for business, for their business, if I tell, if I say this. But you know, I mean, it's good to, for all of us rock hounds, to find our own rocks, to do our own explorations, because if you go to a gem store, and there are many here in the Dells, it kind of, <laughs> it kind of takes the fun out of it. It takes the fun out of finding your own rocks for yourself, you know, seeing what you can discover, and you know, they're after all, they are free. You don't have to pay for them. I mean, we pay for so much other stuff around the, you know, this part of the country. When you go to Wisconsin Dells, you got, uh, you know, resorts that offer, you know, like you, you have to pay motel, you have to pay for all the food, and you have to pay for all the water slides you go on. It's just crazy. Which is why I do a nice video like this, because I'm not like every, I, I am not like everybody else. I like to do my own thing. I think I'm the only one who likes to do things this way which is collect rocks and just keep them as they are <laughs> because I like to think of it like this folks if we lived in a nomadic time or like let's say if you lived in the desert and you knew nothing about internet cell phones jewelry and all these other fantastic man-made things you would find these rocks you would discover them and you would say wow these rocks are very beautiful they are quite neat treasures you would think they were extraordinary I like this one this is a uh, basalt with quartz veins and just like I said in the last video it kinda looks like it's you can see its crystallization it sparkles and just in its dry state it looks just like the Wisconsin winters it looks just like the winter weather that they get up here in the north where they got the white streaks of snow that look like uh, which is quartz veins that look like snow and then the the way it's, uh, it's it kind of the way the crystals sparkle it looks like frost that is a true piece of Wisconsin for you folks so hope you watch the next video thank you very much until next time I'm Victor Mazzari